Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Unity. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's kind of go back to beginning. Uh, what is the beginning? Let's just see. Uh, all right. So uh, I can re kind of re explain just for beginners. If you're expert, just you know this. So again, in Unity, uh, you have assets. So assets are kind of like a basic members to do something. And then assets include component. It's kind of thing that you have four legs. Every, and then it's asset has kind of like this kind of common transform. All these components are, uh, you can check all these components in inspector window. And then these assets here, basically this one simply shows uh, one of the, your project folder, that's it. So they are not really, not ready in your game scene. Yeah, they are just in your folder, that's it. And then here's a asset. Okay, then let's start a little bit about. Okay, so when you begin something, you have only main camera and directional light. So if you want to add a code, you need an asset. But this asset, I, you can just simply use something empty asset so empty asset is just not just nothing's in it on the only the basic component is its position rotation scale that's it but since it is empty nothing will be shown this this one is simply I, as I added to show something so now i would change the name of this asset as uh i just kind of selected and you can change uh here i called it this one is my main code and that's it. So this, this one does not have any physical form here, but it will run by itself once you play it, okay. And then uh, this one is empty, nothing in it, but you have to add a C-sharp code as a component and you are going to attach it to that. So here on bottom side, you can actually create a C-sharp script here. And then I, you, you name anything, but I also bet you that this one is main code so if you just see the template this template only have some libraries imported and only have start and update that's it just like arduino or processing code and i drag it to main code then once i see main code uh, this script main code is now become the asset of this asset <laughs> yeah, very cool. So is it clear? So that's it. And then to uh, change any code here, you, you all you can do is uh, simply you can go to main code and also you can edit here, edit script from here, or you can simply uh, double click this main code, and then you can edit the code. And that's it. And then the first thing I would like to do is actually, so let's create a geometry, not by dragging it or asset. Let's just use program to generate that. Uh, and then this is my code. And then something you have to do is uh, uh, this code. <laughs> Sorry that I just copy paste, but I cannot really remember everything. It's like copy here. Uh, okay, so I just in the cup in the start code, I just add two lines. So cube is a variable name, and this is the data type is game object. So it could be cube or circle, whatever. And then we are going to create one thing. We are going to use creative create a create primitive function or game object class, and then its type is now is cube. What it means, uh, you can actually create any kind of object by changing so if you can do is just um, a game object uh, create primitive uh, it's supposed to be capital uh, game object create primitive and then primitive type that uh, primitive type dot primitive type. Uh, and then you have 
uh, capture cube cylinder plane quad. And these are kind of uh, six basic types that you can generate uh, in the code. And then uh, what you're here is that now actually your cube is actually one of the cube and then for cube, what you're going to do is transform position and new vector here, which is basically you're locating a zero, zero location to this. And actually there's something error. And as you, and actually does it. So actually this vector requires float. So actually I would prefer F, F and F to represent that, but it looks like it automatically handle all those issues. And to make sure that this one is generated, let's kind of place it somewhere outside so we can, we don't need to be confused by other stuff. So this one, after that, I would press Control S to save it and coming back to Unity. Okay, I'll just or comment out or unnecessary stuff. So main is older one. Uh, I comment out most of it and update to uh, update so two okay so this one is control s but this is good no error and going back to one and this is just one that I want to show the, the components that did. And then if you press run, oh, there's an error, asset 47. Ah, uh, oh, there was probably some comment. 4710, ah, oh, here. Uh, uh, looks, uh, looks like the misplaced comment. Uh, it comes out. Okay, so save them. If I run it, yeah, so there's one cube generated. Uh, in the game scene, we don't really uh, implement the uh, uh, camera controlling yet. So if you click the scene, you can actually just can check uh, what's going on here. So you, the, this is the original one. This is the one that I just create by using C -sharp code and you can just turn it off, then it's all disappeared. And this is the cube that I would just call it this one as old cube. Uh, this one, old cube to differentiate it. Okay. Uh, so, so far the first step was easy, right? Okay, so main code, uh, what we did was you, we simply cre uh, define a variable and then we just locate it. And that's it, that's first step. So let's do something else. So let's kind of, uh, uh, copy this object very quickly. So what I do is, so uh, I just copy, uh, and then I simply uh, update the position, or I just kind of, I just copy these two lines. So let's just compare what happened, these two, curve, these two lines staying in update instead of start. And then if, it, if I do that, it'll just repeat again and again, and again unlimited time. So I just limit the number. So I just give uh, simply a global or, or a class variable, which is integer i, which is zero just for now. And then I just want to limit that i plus plus, that's it to what we know. And then if i is smaller than five, so I just want to do it five times only. So if i is smaller than five, Uh, this will kind of continuously done. But here, instead of doing this, instead of 10F, I just may use uh, I is integer. Uh, what happened if I do I, I, I? Do I, com do I comp cast it to float? It looks like it's okay. There's no error. So I just save it. So you probably repeat five times and then it have a five copies. Let's go back to, and then rerun it. So now you see that uh, th this is the one uh, that I created. And that's one, two, three, four, because I make it smaller than five and start from one, so therefore, and this is all the one. So this is quite easy, right, so far. Uh, 
Okay, so instead of doing this, uh, let's do something else. So this one was relatively easy. And what if we want to create at the beginning, maybe five. So now instead of doing this, uh, so let's just use for uh, integer i is uh, set as zero and i is smaller than five and i plus plus. Okay, then I located this one then actually we cannot really locate it because we, we are kind of going to define it. So what is the best way to do that? So we are also kind of, I would just create a list, that's it. So uh, I just copy and paste from here. So you probably all know well about this. So I just make a game object list, that's it. And then I just make 10. And then I kind of define as cube list. And then here, uh, there's a cubes here. So I probably uh, define game object cubes. And that's it. I just declared it here inside of it. And cubes is kind of, uh, since it is creative primitive, it will recreate it, recreate it, recreate it. And then I is actually, I, I, I minus I, so it's kind of going probably down. And then I just put this one into cube list by using add function, it's just basic thing, okay. So if I do that. Okay, so this one is still game mode. So I just turn it off, then all the cube is all the cubes are deleted. If I do it one more time, then actually this one is different one, but as you see that this one is going down. So this is how you create uh, uh, kind of another kind of many uh, cubes in here. And then uh, what if you want to, instead of this one, this is list. What if you want a matrix? So this is X and Y. So you need a kind of nested list. So let's say, make that, uh, I just copy and paste. So you instead of so this is cube list. Uh, let's do something easier one. So for here, uh, let's change their scales. So to change the scale, uh, it is also relatively easy. Uh, going back to code here. After uh, so okay, let's just paste uh, generate after the, uh, let's just do it here. So. So this one transform position will give a new location. And if you do transform local scale, actually there's, a, if you, you may want to, so this local scale came from that transform position came from, if I turn it off. So let's say there's a main is here. Then actually transform is one of its property and position rotation scale is you can actually freely change that using also same thing vector three. But, but instead of scale, position is the same term. Rotation scale, let's check about it. So something trickier thing is if you check cubes dot, cubes dot transform dot, and then actually there's no scale. And then instead of that, there's a local scale. I don't know what is, what, what is lossy scale. Ishan, what is, do you know what is lossy scale? Okay, so not important. If Ishan doesn't know, it's not important. <laughs> She's our working Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, so you can actually use local scale. And then if you want to rotate that, uh, there's a rotation. So you can use position, rotation, local scale, all of these three things come from the components of object. Okay, so you can, you can change local scale. Okay, also you can use uh, vector three. Uh, interestingly, vector three does not bothered by whether it is double or integer or float. It just, it just work. So I just make it a little bit slightly smaller to see the difference. Uh, kind of, I just want to give some space, that's it. So if you run it. So now you probably see just this slight gap. So now you kind of clearly see that these are all separate uh, boxes. Okay, so now coming back to code and let's change color. So to change color, uh, you can also use actually, uh, and then, uh, okay. 
actually, I like to actually make a matrix. One of the reasons I like to make a matrix is uh, one of the assignments for you to make a cube. It's just simple, isn't it? So I just simply uh, show you today uh, nested for loop, but your assignment is creating triple nested loop and creating a matrix, uh, no, creating a cube. So I show you how to make a list. Now I'm showing you how to make a matrix and then your job assignment is to make a cube. Okay, so to make a cube. Uh, so here I kind of showing you how to do that. So here, so instead of, so we, pre, we previously make a uh, list, but here, so I just make it I and J and then cube list comes inside of it. So I just make it, I called it J, but let's just call it as cube list because it's a list. And then here I made a cube matrix and cube matrix, because I want to use cube matrix in the update, I just declare it under uh, C, under class variable. So here I defined uh, matrix variable, which is, uh, you probably recognize this, that this one is list of list of game objects. So it's not so difficult, but the type is just game object, that's it. So I call this one as cube matrix. And then here, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so cube list is created here. And then I need to define a cube list to here too. And I delete it. So cube list, cube list. Why is it complain about it? Oh, no, oh, okay. So here, cube list is actually I place inside of uh, inner roof. So it is created and reset and reset and reset. And each list is assigned inside, put it inside a matrix and one line and one line and one line. So cube list J, instead of cube list to J, I just add a cube list. So this one is easy, right? So five and five, okay, then save it. Uh, and then going back to Unity, if I run it, so now five by five, that's it. So any question about it? Yeah. You, you did a billion times of it probably. So that's it. So we have a create, create a list. Actually, if you can, uh, create a game of life here. <laughs> if you can. Did you learn game of life, right? No? Nobody teach you game of life? Oh, it is a kind of the uh, one of the most interesting you're supposed to know, really. Really? Okay, I'll prepare it next week. In algorithm class, no? Yeah. Welcome to the class. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so I stopped it. Okay, so now this all gone. Okay, so coming back to script. So now, so now we create a one here. So kind of we create a matrix using cube list and cube matrix. So cube matrix is class variable, we can use it again. But now the use of matrix is relatively easier than creating a matrix. So when you basically use a list, basically, yeah, hey, a lot of lines code, <laughs> but they are basically nothing. Uh, I just kind of show you very quickly. Okay, so this one you got, got it, right? I is, so J is uh, increasing zero to one, two, three, four, one, zero, one, two, three, four to five, and I is kind of outside of it. So now matrix can be used by using this double bracket. You know this one, right? Yeah, so it, it's easy. So a J, but you can actually reverse the order and change what's the difference, okay? And then what I'm working on here is now, I am, I'm trying to change the local scale using random function. So what does that mean? I just simply change the randomly changed uh, scale, that's it. So it's just, it just nothing. So I just simply use local scale one more time and X, Y, Z, but X, Y, Z, I just use random range function, nothing. Okay, so if I do that, What you will see, 
Oh, is there any error? Okay, uh, go back to script. Uh, what did I miss? What? Ah, uh, I lost uh, one bracket. Why would you want to make squares if it only, it only exists in the game view and not in the scene view when you... Because, okay, so I will show you one more time. Okay, so because uh, these boxes only generated after this start code is run. Oh, okay. At the beginning of scene view, this start didn't run at the time. This one only runs after I click the triangle box and it is switched to game mode, then the code is running. Yeah, but like, why would you want that? And in, instead of just like creating the things in scene view beforehand? Oh, that's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. So uh, I try to teach you generate everything in code. Okay. I don't want you to use your mouse anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons. Let machine do. All you have to do is just simply click button, that's it, okay. by using algorithm and code. Uh, there's one exception. I will explain that. That something you cannot do using this one. Okay. Right. So uh, because because uh, the start is generating the initial setup, right? Oh, oh I already run too much. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So do you see here? This one is actually scale is randomly changing. That's it. So scale is from 0 0.1 to 1. So kind of and in x, y, g random direction. So now you see that. Um, can I click one? Okay. Uh, go to scene view. So now this one is actually all changing x, y, g scale. That each box is changing randomly. That's it. Very busy. <laughs> I like it. Looks like they're hard working, right? <laughs> All right, so, and it's kind of randomly changing. So now let's change the color. Uh, to change color, uh, all you have to do is simply working on uh, color, that's it. So color to manipulate color, what you are going to do is you kind of use get component uh, and then you're bringing renderer and material color. So where is this? Let's take a look at it. If you go to uh, old cube, if you go to material, and then you're bringing this material in form of list, generic list. So uh, what does that mean by is any type of different things can be, you can make a list, uh, generic type. And then here, if you take a look at about it, you can see RGB. Well, there's something, one tricky thing I found out. So many RGB, including Photoshop or any or other things, they use zero and two fifty five. But I realized that uh, in Unity, it doesn't work like that. It just works between zero and one. And one thing I couldn't figure out was uh, Ishan. I couldn't <laughs> fix to change their transparency. I found out that I can actually work on Alpha channel, my color dot A. But it didn't update. Oh, because it's, it's due to the material. But I changed the material of alpha channel. So actually I changed it here. And then I assign it to this material color. Um, normally the material is in, I think it's in fabric color or something. If you change it to transparent. Yeah. Yeah, normally. And there, because I don't usually use it. I use like there is a channel, there is an opacity channel. Ah, uh, do you change that? that? Yes. Ah, okay, opacity channel? Yes. Okay, I see. Okay. All right, so now I simply change the color from now on. So once oh. I, so you can actually, just like position, you can actually get the renderer uh, component by using get component. And it's material that color by updating it, you can actually change that. All right, so then if you update it, okay, now your sizes are all changing and colors are all changing. Uh, okay. 
Uh, and then now let's try to actually move or move a kind of this kind of uh, uh, move their positions from now on. So to, to move their position, all you have to do is update their position parameter. And actually I just use the same, it's up to, up to you, uh, but I just simply, I just want to recycle the X, Y, Z position as their uh, moving uh, position parameter, but they are only zero and one. So I just multiply to zero to five because, because I just using five. So this one, I just move X, Y, Z like five in X, Y, Z in all three different directions. So once I update it. And if I run it. Yeah, now it's kind of like changing. It's kind of changing variable, it's changing color. It just do um, a different way. And now uh, one of my complaint was, can I, this is too fast. And then too, at first time it was interesting, but they're in the same speed. So kind of like, I'm just curious about how to change the speed of movement. Actually, uh, uh, more advanced way is actually when you move it, you, you can set the moving distance as set as a Delta and then you can change the Delta by doing so. If Delta is small, it moves slowly. If Delta is a lot, then it will move fast. You got there, <laughs> but the kind of easy fix is actually I kind of I changed simply the frequency rate. So you can actually change the frequency rate by simply changing um, applications uh, target frame rate. That's it. Okay, so this is the line we need, and then actually I place this one in the update uh, update function because update is kind of chip changing frame rate. And then the frame rate is actually controlled by the target frame rate variable, which was inside the application class. The application class is controlling the overall Unity application. And then I simply range 10 to 300. Actually the 300 is the maximum frame rate that a computer can. And actually you cannot see, I think the, the 300 frame is depending on your monitor and many of your monitor, the maximum frequency you probably have is 120. If you buy a really expensive one, it's 150. And if you have really high quality monitor, that's like 300. And then now 10 F is actually, so it was kind of 10 times per seconds probably. So it will randomly change from a 10, Miguel, I can change to, uh, one, so this is one of the slowest one, but I believe that this monitor is only over 120 frame rate. So it changed maximum speed to one of the lowest speed. So I just save it and then I just run Unity. And if I run, so now sometimes it's slow, sometimes fast, sometimes freeze. So kind of you can actually control in the frame rate, but, but this is really kind of the way of doing that. But what it means, imagine that, this one was very uh, interesting notion to me was that, I, I really don't know why gravity does matter with time, but however, there's an interesting argument that let's imagine that you are moving in KTX and then imagine that a kid was running inside a KTX and the, K, the speed of KTX is, let's say 300 kilometer per hour is really fast. And then there's a little girl running around inside the cabin and then there, and her mom said, stop. <laughs> and then probably the little girl may stop, but does it really stop? She's inside a KTX that is running 300 kilometer per hour. So which one is right speed? Is she really stop or she's moving 300 kilometers? But if, he, if she's kind of walk in the train, that general walking speed of human being is like four kilometer per hour. So if she walk, it's a 304 kilometer per hour. Is she really walking or she's flying? So it's all relative. And then actually though, now, uh, oh, did you see the movie Limitless? Yeah. You did that? 
Yeah, it's yeah. kind of my dream movie that there's a drug. If you take it, your brain is kind of like right. becomes super smart. And there's a one scene uh, that uh, I don't know where uh, it's kind of like walking, uh, walking scene. I don't know where YouTube has it. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know. So this guy, uh, this guy becomes smarter, and his time runs slower than others because he thinks faster than other people. Then if he can do, it's kind of your dream. So kind of like if you take a drug that you can extend your time a day on more than you, you're for your final exam, you can study more. But if you are smart, without that pills, actually imagine that. So imagine that, imagine that your thinking speed, actually I teach actually uh, 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 kids in kindergarten, like ages five to seven, uh, because I see like 20, 40 kids at once, I kind of can sense some of them are think faster than, than the other. Uh, you probably feel the same way that your friends uh, calculate some difficult probability fast. What does that mean by thinking faster? So imagine that, uh, let's say Jason think twice faster than me, meaning actually, even if we live same 100 years, but he can think twice faster than me. He actually, he live in 200 years. Because he can do twice as much job compared to mine. So actually time also depends on intelligence. Okay, then actually he showed that uh, he walked through in, uh, and then actually he feel that she speaks so slowly because her way of thought is so fast. She, he actually predict what he's telling. And actually there's at the end of it, uh, there is a scene, uh, not this one, but I kind of like uh, it got to show that how intelligence uh, fill someone's perception of time. And actually there's a really nice scene about space distortion. Uh, okay, okay, so I couldn't find this. Uh, I strongly recommend for you to see that all, all at the same time. Okay, so now its frequency is the changing uh, uh, the color of it. And, uh, uh, okay, okay, I stopped it. Okay. And actually, there's one, uh, okay, so in the main, okay, so. Uh, there's one last thing that I want to mention about it. Okay, so here's kind of trickier part. Uh, so all these things that you can uh, using script to generate geometries only limited functionalities it has. It only, you can also create by using script only the basic primitive spheres. What if you want a human figure? Like, like Star Wars movie, like if you wanna generate uh, 100 soldiers fighting by themselves. It's not really possible. So using scripts. So one way of doing it, actually, I have to say it didn't really work well with me. So I will kind of re show it but one more time. But if you can, please uh, solve it on your own way. So, okay. So here's the one, what I'm trying to do. Okay. So uh, I kind of declare a variable under the main code. So now I'm declaring a, variable so i but this one's supposed to be public uh normally i uh, just told you that you just ignore all the public private things because everything is public because we are not really access them from using software programming but this one public uh it enables you to use those variable outside of this code or or, or default is i believe is all private meaning that only uh, code inside can access those variables. So, and then as a public, I kind of declare a game object and just give whatever your favorite name, I, I don't know. So I just say custom, custom object, and then done. You don't really need to assign any geometry or name here. And then you need to save it. And if you go back to Unity and this one is main code, now main code has this custom object variable pops up. 
So now, now what you have to do is go back to project and you have to manually select that this one is actually this custom object. So go to select asset, and then you select custom two and enter. Then now uh, in here, uh, this, your asset in your folder is connected to your code. This is kind of how it does connect. But it didn't work. Do you know why? <laughs> It didn't work. It's supposed to work, but it didn't work. I don't know why. So, uh, can you type here? <laughs> okay, so this is here. And then the all I have to do is in maybe start, or I have to do the variable is generated. And then, so here, custom object is generated you can work on and then let's say transform and probably position is a new so i just copy back to probably so it's supposed to be located here somewhere i just do that maybe two to two to separate them from others but it doesn't really placed in that location oh it's because actually the the game object that you drag and drop is still in the asset it it doesn't in the sync so you need to like uh, create uh pr because it's a prefer preset so you can like create an instance of it ah uh, so i have to instantiate it yes how to uh, <laughs> I, I don't uh, uh, oh, I, Search yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I see, I see. I forgot that part. Actually, yeah, I have. I, I long time ago I did it, but I suddenly, yeah, instantiated. Okay, so here is yes. the one. Okay, so I have to use this one. Okay, ah, uh, I, I forgot that. So, what you have to do is you have to instantiate it. What does the instantiate means is this one brings the your custom prefab asset in the folder to the game scene. Okay, thank you very much. You're my hero. <laughs> okay, so but I don't need to really uh, create a data type here. So here I just simply called it a custom object and instantiate. Uh, one thing I have a problem is so at that time the void. So this one's supposed to be the name of it. Okay, sorry for that, but I will okay, I will try to fix it with zero F. Uh, zero F, uh, and then uh, void. Okay, so void. I need to name it, so I just call it as custom object. Yeah, let's just try it. There's no error. So I just save it. I'm going back to. I run it. Oh, yes, yes. I love you. <laughs> so here's my custom object. Okay. All right. And then once you initiate it, then you can actually change that one, move around it. Okay. Uh, so I, so for, I'll just to continue next week. So let's run Game of Life. This is really fun. Uh, uh, should I? Mm, normally when I teach that, I teach L system before game of object. Are you all comfortable with L system, Lindenmeyer system? Lindenmeyer system. Lindenmeyer system is this. Uh, this is another fantastic algorithm. Uh, I really love to teach L. It's known as L system or Lindenmeyer system. So this one is a kind of precursor of game of life. So this one is a kind of called a generative system. Uh, so here's something, uh, because uh, there is a kind of pre-step that I have to explain something. Uh, maybe, is there an English week? Okay. Any, okay, there's an English version. Okay. So L system is a kind of a very well-known algorithm to generate a kind of artificial like system. So something like light-like form. So this is really the kind of one of the basic uh, algorithm that create a, Kind of like a fungus 
or bacteria or kind of those kind of uh, thing. So I have to explain one thing. So these are kind of trickier parts. Are you familiar with this kind of stuff? GV, I don't know, uh, initiator alphabet or production rules. Uh, this is really kind of like an algorithmic way of thinking your code. So this is kind of additional layer on top of the, your code. So let's kind of talk about it. So this is system. Uh, this one is much simpler than uh, Conway's game of life. So that's why I'm explaining it. Okay. You have to work with me, otherwise it's me. So I'll give it maybe two, three papers. Otherwise, it cannot be understood by your brain. Uh, this system is beyond your recognition. Uh, Fun time for you. Uh, hard time for you. And then I may need to give pencil. Anyone have pencil or pens? Yes, here it is. Uh, okay, let's do it this way. Okay, so variables, do you know variable? What is variable? Variable something changing. And what is constant? Cannot be changed. So it is at the beginning, it is composed of some variables and some constants. And then you can actually generate any kind of combination of them. So it doesn't matter. And then axiom, what is an axiom? Axiom is initiator. It's just kind of Greek, uh, good word for initiator. Initiator, meaning that at the beginning, there's an axiom. That's it. So it's a starting point. And so axiom is something you designed it as a start point. And there are rules. So rule is you can design in any way you want. So let's have fun with this. Okay, so here is the process. Uh, I may... Oh, uh, where is, uh, oh, here, uh, I need to, okay, I need a whiteboard, okay. Okay. So let's say that, so, uh, so at the beginning, there is an initiator, which is A. And then there's a rule, if it is A, it become AB. So if it is A, it become A, B, right? And the rule says, if A, it becomes AB. If B's, it become A. You got it? So now there's ABA. So A becomes AB. And B becomes A. And A becomes AB. So this is actually rule-based system. And then uh, now what we are going to do, we are going to draw if, so now you can design anyway. So you are going to draw circle if there's A. You, you are going to draw rectangle if there's a B. Or you can change that, oh, I was going to draw circle if there's A. I'm going to rotate 90 degree if there's a B. So it can be any kind of formation that you can draw. So when you have this, uh, and then there, here's another interesting one, fractal. Ah, so if you, if you like to work on fractal, this is a really good starting point. So let's say that. So talk about axiom zero. And then you have two variable, zero or one. And then you have constant, which is left bracket or open bracket or closing bracket. And now uh, it's so interesting that, oh, okay, then here is the kind of the uh, geometric rule assigned to a symbol. So if there's a zero, draw a line segment ending in a lift. So here's a, so now let's kind of talk to those. So if there's a zero, zero becomes one open bracket, zero closing bracket, zero. So zero become this and one becomes one one so the one becomes one one left bracket is constant so it stays still zero turns to this so it kind of it just become like this it's easy right but here's the interesting part so let's imagine that 
the first recursion, one open bracket, zero closing bracket, zero. So axiom zero is drawing a line. So it draws a line here. <clears throat> if one draw a line segment, so one, it draw a line. Uh, this one, is, I have to draw it. Okay. Um, where is my canvas? Okay, here it is. Okay, so now let's draw together. Uh, this is really interesting part. Uh, I'm highly sure that there is always some kind of fractal drawing so you can see some kind of colorful. Yeah. <laughs> that this one explains how to draw that. And it's so surprisingly, that complex fractal design has this simple rule. That's the interesting part. Okay, so let's draw together. Where is okay? So so zero. I draw this. Is there any pencil? Where is pencil? I lost it. Okay, so okay, so this is zero. So I draw vertical line, vertical line, and then next recursion one. Draw a line segment. So I draw a line segment, and then open bracket, open bracket, angle turn left forty five. So I turn this one forty five here. Therefore, I delete it. And then I have zero, zero, draw a line segment here. And then closing bracket, closing bracket, turn right 45 angles. So this one turned into 45 and I delete original. You got it? So you do this one, one, zero, zero, two, draw, rotate, draw, rotate, draw, rotate, draw, rotate. And this will create this recursive tree structure. So uh, if you can, you will, you will enjoy a lot. Trust me, this is really fun. And then this one is a, a Pierce, Pierce key, a coach curve. I think the name is Pierce key, uh, Sear, Sear Pinsky triangle is this. And then this one create a lot of interesting too. And then this one will extend to extend, extend to, uh, 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 I forgot what to do. By watching the visitors. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today. So have fun. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. You, uh, I don't know. So just do something, whatever, easy way. Uh, because there's no line, and unity is the problem. So you have to actually input a line segment or just create a bar and then just extend it in one scale and then use it as moving uh, element. Uh, that this will be really fun. Okay, that's it for today. And then, yeah, I kind of. Uh, so if you have a, I don't know. I wish that one of you can do by yourself because this was easy. I teach this one to architecture students who don't know anything about computer programming. I teach this one in a week, and then they can do by themselves. You guys are <laughs> CS students, so I believe that you can do, but. Uh, if you if you if it take too much, don't worry about it. I will explain next week. All right. Okay. That's it for today. All right. Have fun uh, the rest of the week. All right.